Hey guys, what's up? Mike here with another video review. Um, just uh, I'm actually planning to review a couple, a couple things um, tonight. Uh, actually, um, Avenging Spider-Man number four comes out next week, so I'm gonna be doing a uh, Avenging Spider-Man three and four review next week, next Wednesday or Thursday. Um, but today or tonight, I'm gonna be reviewing Scarlet Spider number one and number two, and as well as my Detective Comics reviews of four, five, and six, which I've been, which I've been putting off forever. Um, it's been like a month and a half, like three months actually, since it's three issues. Um, and then Batman Robin will be coming out tomorrow night or Sunday afternoon, depending on what happens. So, um, so I'm going to be reviewing Scarlet Spider number one and number two. Um, as you can see, here's number one. I have the blank cover variant. And here's number two. I have the normal cover. Um, and the creative team for um, Scarlet Spider is, I believe, uh, Chris Yost, uh, Ryan Stegman, um, Michael Babinski, and Marti Mar Marty Garcia. Gracia? Gracia, I believe. Um, so I've been really looking forward to the Scarlet Spider series to start up. I've been, you know, the last Scarlet Spider was Ben Riley, um, and you know, this Scarlet Spider is actually a different Scarlet Spider. It's not Ben Riley. It's actually Peter's evil clone, Kane, who who became a hero during Spider Island. This is coming right out of Spider Island. So the issue starts off with um, uh, Kane. He's sort of he's sort of in Houston, Houston, Texas. And he sort of, um, you know, trying to to find his place in the world, especially as Peter's clone. He doesn't want to be Peter. He doesn't want to be Spider-Man or a hero. But he wants he wants to be Kane, and he wants to to find his own his own destiny. Um, so he's at this um, what seems to be a loading dock, and it looks like some sort of crime is going down. And he takes some of them some of the the villains down. Um, they seem to be regular gangsters. Um, Kane then spiders through them. You know, he just beats the shit out of them. He and he um, has organic webbing. He doesn't have um, web shooters. He has organic webbing. So um, he's more similar to the the, the movie Spider Man, where he does he has all the powers plus the organic webbing. And um, he's a lot more violent. He uses his spider powers to stick to people's faces and their skins, and he rips you know violently pulls off. So um, he steals a bunch of money. This is obviously a deal going down, and he hears a noise coming from a container. When he opens it, it's filled with dead bodies, and he sees that you know there's one left, and he saves the girl. He brings her to the hospital, and he leaves. Um, he actually manages to go to a hotel. He pays for it, you know, and then he he sort of has a flashback of like his his past of how he was evil, how he was a failed clone. Um, made by the jackal and he tried to kill Ben Riley and Peter Parker and that recently you know he was brought back to life he died for Peter in a grim hunt um was brought back to life by the jackal and you know just saved the world with Peter but he's trying to discover himself you know forget his not forget his past but move on from his past and he he gets a haircut shaves and he's above Houston and just like sort of feels revitalized you know it's hot but you know it's different it's some place that they don't know who he is they don't have superheroes in Texas so he he can be anyone do anything essentially not as an evil but do anything as a person so um, we then see the 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 he he's swinging around Houston and then we see the port where he was at the cops are there and then we see a villain um, he has tattoos and he's not really he's not very that interesting looking and then we see um, Kane, and he sees this woman about to get hit by a car, this old lady crossing the street, and he, he tries to ignore it, but there's this nagging feeling in his mind to do something. So he, he jumps from, like, up on top of a building, lands on the car, and saves the woman. But, you know, he doesn't realize that the driver flew out the windshield, and he's, he's hurt. He's, he's covered in glass. He's dying. And he runs away. He, he's just terrified. So um, Kane decides to leave, um, leave Houston, when this villain um, 
he he attacks the hospital where the young lady Kane saves is, and that's where the issue actually ends. Um, so this issue I read about a month ago when it first came out, um, Sc Scarlet Spider number two actually just came out this week, I believe, or like last week, came out very recently. Um, it's actually a very good issue. N number one, number one, re really, really was really good. Um, I said really a lot. Um. You know, Chris Yow did a great job of establishing who Kane is in, in, in like, really two pages, three pages. He established the history of Kane and what Kane did as as evil as an evil person and then as Spider-Man. You know, there, there wasn't a whole a lot of backstory that you needed to know coming into this because it was explained really, really simple. And at the end of the issue, they have a quick backstory of the clone saga and who the clones of Spider-Man are and what happened to the clones. So Marvel did a great job with this. Um, Story-wise, it was actually a very solid introduction issue, especially with Kane. Kane is sort of Peter, but at the same time he's not. He 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 has all of Peter's memories, and he remembers everyone, but he doesn't have the same the same drive that Peter has to be a better person to to make a difference in the world because of how he was created that because he, he was a clone that he was toyed with that he was he was created to be evil he, like he has found his purpose in trying to kill Spider-Man and then he he changed his life he sacrificed himself for Peter for the greater good and you know now he's trying to find that place in this universe and trying not to be Peter Parker and trying not to be Spider-Man and that that has heavy impact on issue two especially but Chris has a great job of introduction just great groundwork for Kane as a clone and trying to f like as a confused person not even as a clone um in terms of artwork um Ryan Stegman does a good job um with uh, Babinski and Gracia as his color um inker and colorist um I'm not too fond of the way they designed Kane himself as a character he's very generic looking which I guess is the type of type of look they're going for because he's trying not to stand out he's trying to be just another face in the crowd so he really doesn't look like Peter at all. Um, especially, um, maybe I have to see Stegman draw Peter next to Kane to see a resemblance. But looking at Kane, I wouldn't call him Peter Parker. I'd call him just a random guy I might never have noticed walking down the street. And he could he could be a superhero. Um, I actually like the spider costume a lot. He actually didn't put it on in this issue. But he we saw a glimpse of it. And you see... Um, it in issue two, spider costume is very interesting. I like it a lot. Um, there, um, there are a bunch of variant variations that Stegman designed. Um, some I like better than this one, but this one is not bad. It's actually a pretty decent version of a, you know, he's he, it's a lot darker. It's a lot. It's different. It doesn't. It's, you know, it's Spider-Man, but it's still not Spider-Man. You know, just if you can get what I mean. So uh, issue one, I'm gonna be giving a uh, four out of five. That's actually a really good issue. Um, I really liked it a lot. Um, there is some problems I had with it, mostly with Stegman's design of not the of um, Stegman's design of Kane slash sort of Kane's personality. Um, I found that Kane's personality was a little too. Because he is part Peter, he he has this nagging feeling to do better, to be good, but he doesn't think it through, which sort of clearly separates him from Peter. But at the same time, he has all Peter's memories. He he's a clone of Peter, so I feel like he should have thought things through more when he he saved this woman and stuff. He but he he really rushed in head first, you know, and probably cost a man his life and he ran away from it um you know the situation because he didn't want to be that guy in the spotlight which i guess is understandable but at the same time you know he has to he has all the power you know it's like what the tagline on the issue, on the comics has all the power none of the rest responsibility um you know kane does have all the powers and he he wasn't raised or you know he doesn't live his life by what great power comes great responsibility and i think that's uh that's something he needs to do because he is, like, regardless of what he he tries to fight it, he is Peter Parker in a sense, and he has to realize that you know he has powers. He has to make you know, you know with those powers, he has to make a difference in the world. So four out of five for issue two. So issue issue one, issue two. Um, it's by the same creative team. Um, 
Ryan Stegman, um, not uh, Chris Yoss, the writer, and um, who else was on this? Um, Babinski and uh, Marty Gracia, Mike Babinski. So the issue starts off with um, Kane. He's actually remembering um, remembering what what happened to him. You know, when he was born, he he was born. He had a genetic defect. His his skin was damaged. And the the jackal tried to kill him, and he he has a dream of falling into a genetic a genetic waste, you know, filled with failed clones of Peter and Gwen St Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy. And then he wakes up. He's in a taxi leaving Houston, and then you know there's an explosion at the hospital. He he wants to leave. He wants to turn his back on it, but he knows that you know this girl asked me to save her, and I he can't just leave it. You see, which is part. Which is Peter Parker coming through, like the best parts, um, which I think Kane has. He has the best parts of Peter Parker in him, and I guess that can help him be a better person, because he also has the baggage of being Kane. So he he decides to go save this woman, and he decides, you know, five more minutes. You know, he he tries to rationalize. It. He's like, why is he doing this? Is you know, the girl's nothing but you know, nothing to him. She has no relation, but he says, you know, five minutes. It'll only take five minutes. So we see this monster, um, this guy, he, he's tattooed guy, he, he's speaking in Spanish, he, he's like a pyrokinetic, he controls, he's sort of like pyro, but I guess he can make fire, so he's pyro, but better, and he's looking for this girl, trying to fight her, and then you see, um, Kane busting a window through his spider suit, and I'm gonna be showing you the costume real quick, and the issue, um, so it's red and black, um, you could also look online, they, they had a lot of preview art when the, the issue came out, uh, before the Spider-Man started, so he he starts running through he he busts through he's like you know what this is gonna take a little bit more than five minutes and they start fighting, and the guy says, um I guess his name is Salamander or something like that, you know I always want to fight a superhero. Well, Kane says you know what too bad I'm not a hero I'm not a superhero. Um. So Kane decides you know he starts whooping up on the dude. He uses his his sticky pow stick and powers to stick to the dude's skin. And as I said, Kane's a lot more violent. He's a lot more physical than Peter. Peter punches and kicks. Kane will stick to you and rip your body apart. So he, Kane gets lit on fire and he he starts he kicks he manages to take the dude outside the building and starts whooping on on him Spider-Man style. Um. And then the guy says, "Can you kill? Do you think you could kill me, Spider-Man?" But well, Kane picks up a gun from a cop that cop um, that he saved and shoots the guy. Um, and you know the dude throws a bunch of fire at Kane, and Kane wraps himself up in wet um, cocoon webs, like a cocoon of webs. Uh, you know, busts out, put, whoops up the dude, and he's like, you know, what? I'm not Spider-Man. Um, webs up the guy and just knocks the shit out of him. And then everyone starts cheering for him. They they recognize him as a hero. He saved not only the hospital, but he he saved the hospital. And he saved a whole bunch of lives. But he he runs away and he goes talk to the girl. And you know the, a cop and the doctor are there. They see him without his mask on because he's talking to the girl. And they're like, you know what? It, we're not gonna you know chase you. We're not gonna persecute you because you you saved our lives. You made a difference. No, they they want him to stay and be a hero for Houston. So, um, Kane actually decides, you know, um, so at the end of the shoe, he, he actually takes a girl with him to his apartment, or like, to an apartment, and, you know, he sort of, mo has the internal monologue, he's like, his name's Kane, you know, all his life he, he was dying because of his genetic defect, he did terrible things as a clone, but now he has a chance, a second chance, and he doesn't want to waste it. But he he said you know he's like I'm not Spider-Man he's not a hero, and but that doesn't mean that he doesn't that he has to be a, a terrible person or a monster he he could stop running and try to have a life and if if he can't you know he just go to Mexico because it's right there and that's where the issue ends. Um, I actually like this issue a lot. Um, coming off of issue one, it's actually especially since it was a, they didn't have a long drawn out arc for the introduction of. Kane as a Scarlet Spider, and especially since he he sort of differentiated himself from Peter as you know he's not Spider Man. I he he states that I'm not Spider Man, you know I'm not that guy. I'm not a hero. He, which you know he tries to play off, but at the same time he is a hero. He saved all the people. But I like how Chris Yoss did a great job of 
showing the difference between Kane and all the baggage he carries. See, he has a lot of baggage. You know, him and Peter both have a lot of baggage, but Kane has a lot more because he was evil, because he took lives, you know, with his powers in the name of trying to kill Ben Riley and Peter Parker to try to, to you know, because he, he was a monster, but he, he, sh he has a second chance to... to make a name for himself or be whatever he wants to be a, a person because you know he never had that chance you know when he was born great job oh Chris I say a great job um so as I said Stegman's art is interesting um I love the way he draws um there, it's not his artwork's very different when it comes to Spider-Man it's not as dynamic as Humberto Ramos's arc when Humberto Ramos's art is zany and all over the place where uh, Stefano Castelli um his art I actually like a lot. His Stefan Caselli does a great job of drawing Spider Man moving place to place, but not in the zany matter of Humberto, Humberto Ramos. Um, you know, uses a lot of lines and shadows to move Spider Man. But um Ryan Segman has an interesting style too. He doesn't really show the shadows or the zany movement, but there's a lot of dynamic movement through the panels. Like, you know, one panel you can see Kane and in the next panels, it can be empty. In another panel, you see him kicking someone out the window, which is really interesting. Um, as I said before in my in issue one, I don't really like his character design of Kane outside the suit. Outside the suit, it's a little weird. He's a little generic, which I guess, that's, as I said, it's the vibe they're going for. But I still don't really. It doesn't really appeal to me. He's not really that. You know, I couldn't pick him up out of a lineup and call him a hero or someone I'd be interested in talking to. That's the thing. Um, like when you see Captain America in a lineup. You you can say that guy he he's he looks like Captain America, you know, outside the costume like based on the artist style, um, but inside the suit I actually really like the color scheme this red and black. There was a one particular color s style that he designed was really really interesting and really good that I liked a lot, but they actually chose this one um, which is not a big deal. This, the costume's really interesting, especially since apparently um, it's supposed to be. Kane taking Sp what Spidey stealth suit and you know doing his own style with it, which I guess is sort of working. But he he made his own spider suit out of Peter's old suit, so whatever. Um, I'm actually gonna be giving issue two a four out of five. This issue was really great, really solid issue. Um, not much else to say. Um, thanks for watching. I'm actually gonna be putting up Batman review tonight, I believe. Such really late. I'll probably do it tonight or very soon. But um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you check this issue out. You know, it's especially since it's because it's two ninety nine. That's really cheap. You know, compared to most comics. Um, you know, which are a little bit pricier, three ninety nine, four dollars, five dollars. It's a good um, no, it's a good bang for your buck. You know, very solid books for the price. And I'm looking forward to what Chris Yas does. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about the Scarlet Spider. Um. You know, uh, if you like my videos, check out some of my other stuff. I review Amazing Spider-Man. If you're just getting to my video of Batman, um, Avenging Spider-Man, Secret Avengers, things like that. Um, Wolverine and the X-Men, yada yada. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Have a great weekend.